this is something I've wanted to do for a really long time. There are some people I've talked about to about Crusader Kings 2 and always was like, it's the best game ever. It ruined grand strategy games for me because it can't be topped. So now I want to show the game. Slowly but surely building up. So we're using almost all DLC to get the full glory of it. Only DLC that's deactivated is Sunset Invasion. This one. Uh, so we're going to single player and we're going to play a new game. First thing you notice is that you select a point in time to start off with. Now, personally, I prefer starting early and building up. Uh, there are some new options about randomizing the world, shattering it. We're not going to deal with any of these. So we're going to start here. The game now gives you a brief description of the time you're going to be playing in, what the major players and powers are, and then you get a selection of uh, characters that the game suggests you play. Uh, all of these are kings, except for Mr. Al-Mansur, who is a emperor. These are Muslim rulers, these are all Christian, and this one is probably Hindu or something like it. Um, he's a Raja, so you would play in India, unless you're going to do what we're going to do, which is custom game setup, because while starting as a ruler can be interesting, I feel starting at the lowest rung of the hierarchy in Crusader Kings 2 gives you a much bigger insight into how the game works, and it gives you a much greater chance of learning all the intricacies of it. Now, what I'm going to play is a tribal society in this, to show it off, because tribal currently is pretty strong, and it allows for less stressful gameplay in the beginning. Uh, also, we're going to play here in Ireland, which is, by all accounts, basically the starter island where you learn the game easiest, because there are no huge factions, naval warfare isn't really a thing yet, and your neighbors are all pretty equal. The map you see here is mainly the terrain and you can kind of make out the areas. But to find where we want to start, we can look for the realms. So you have West Francia, Middle Francia, Saxony. And as you can tell, Ireland and England, they're not really united yet. Because that wasn't a thing. So. There's one larger piece in Ireland that consists of two counts. If we look at the Duke, um, at the Dukes, you can tell those that have two pieces of land generally are Dukes. So these are Dukedoms and also Realms because this is the highest title. We're going to go into titles later. For now, we want to figure out a count to play because that is the lowest rung of uh, rank that you as a player can hold. There are lower ranks, but you as a player can't play these. So we're going to concentrate on Ireland here. And personally, I enjoy starting in the south, but it limits <clears throat> your possibilities a little bit too much sometimes. So we're actually going to start with a little bit of a privileged um, starting position over here uh, with Dalbirn, because he has two counties, you can see this is his realm. He is still a count, but he has two counties under him. Now, actually, we're not going to do that, thinking about it, because he's already old. And if he doesn't really have any sort of successes, this will break up and we're going to lose a part anyway. So what instead we're going to do is we're going to start at Umrumhain as the Eirgernacht dynasty. And we're pretty young. We could customize this. Personally, I don't care for it. I just start. Now, there are possibilities to select a random character. And we're not going to bother with any of this. We have some information here. We're going to do some more insight on, on the next one. Here's a lot of rules. We're going to play Iron Man. Iron Man means if my dynasty dies out, the game is over for me. And I cannot save 
game scum, so I can't go back reload games and uh, try to avoid bad situations. So we're going to leave all of this as it is, because that's fine. We set a save game and we start as Iron Man. Now keep in mind, I have almost 600 hours on this game now, and the first 50 were spent learning. Learning why I died, why I failed, what I could do in the future to prevent it, and all of this. So now as we start, the game gives this welcome screen where some basic things are explained. And the next screen gives you concrete information on what your chosen culture and society and everything means. So the Irish culture that we are has the fact that we have a tan uh, tanistry succession law, which I'm not entirely sure what it means. We're going to look at it. Um, we are a tribe, so a tribe can do all of these things, which some of which are really interesting, most of which aren't really for now, so we're going to leave it at that. And we're Catholic. Catholic uh, Catholicism in uh, Crusader Kings 2 means more later in the game. Right now it doesn't mean all that much. We're going to get to all of this as well. So there's a lot of information thrown on you right from the start. First thing we want to do is change the map view to something more sensible. Now, we want the realm view, so we get a better idea of who's who and what is what. You can create these shortcuts over here by simply dragging them onto these, for you, possibly empty things, and thus you get a good idea of the most important map modes for you. Now, zooming in, this is us. This is our county, and we are surrounded by three or rather two counts in the north and the south and a duke over in the west. Now, there's a lot of things, a lot of buttons, a lot of information and if you see if I hover over something there's a lot of text. Crusader Kings 2, to really get it, to really understand what's going on, it requires some reading. Things repeat throughout the game, so once you've read something, once or twice or maybe five times you will know just by what you're looking at uh, what the text will be. Now, the information we're looking at currently in this uh, tooltip down over on this side is information on the county tile that we have selected. And it tells us that the terrain is plains, the climate is mild winter, the current winter is mild, and the name and how many units it can supply, all of which is going to be much more interesting once we go to war. Um, for now, you're started with a bunch of options up here, which are going to directly affect our character. Now, clicking on us, we get our character view, which is important, and you're going to spend some time here throughout the game. Down here, you have all the traits that this character has, all the modifiers that will accumulate, the titles that we hold, which is currently one, the claims that we have to titles that are not ours, which is zero, and our diplomacy, where we would have truces, wars, alliances, all of this. Now, down here is our family information, really. Our grandparents and our parents both have already died. If you hover over the little skull here, it tells you why they died. A natural death, also a natural death. And these are our children, as it says here. The one with the crown is our heir. The one with the blood that has a golden outline. That is someone directly related to us. Close member of our dynasty. She's our daughter. Now, in Crusader Kings, something really interesting is how diplomacy works. You do not actually fight uh, a battle against random AI, where you're just like, hey, Mr. Dude, uh, let's become allies. Because it doesn't let you do this. It doesn't allow it. It's grey. If you look at the tooltip, it tells you why it's grey, because he is not a close relative, nor does he have a non-aggression pact with us. So we can't. We can't talk to him. However, as we just discovered, we have a daughter. And as befits medieval times, children, especially daughters that are not eligible to become an heir, are very valuable to secure alliances. So we're going to see if maybe we can arrange a betrothal. 
Not a marriage, because our daughter is still underage, so we can only promise her to marry. So, on our side, this is our side, this is their side, we're going to select our daughter, and we're going to see if they have any eligible children that would be capable of marrying her. And as it so happens, he has actually two sons down here. And both of them are unmarried and unbetrothed. So both of them could be betrothed to our child if he accepts. Doesn't really matter which as long as this icon is here. This indicates that we are going to get a non-aggression pact with King Maelduin of Mumu. So we're going to use his firstborn who is also his heir. Because that way if he dies and he comes into reign the alliance will stand. So, he doesn't agree to this, there are some reasons for it, um, her skills aren't all that great, so she, he's not convinced of her. Their political concerns, those are usually there. So let's try the other kid. No, also not, not a chance, so that's a shame. We could, of course, ask him directly, but that's not going to change anything, because his dad decides, and he's already against it. So. We really need, in this early stage, to secure at least one alliance. Or at least, at the very very least, a non-aggression pact. We also have a son. So, let's see if maybe he has a daughter. Or someone closely related. We would see it here, but... As you can tell, there's no one. So... We will not be able to secure an alliance here. Maybe... We have better luck over here. With our other neighbor. Who will eventually want to attack. But for now, let's see if we can't secure ourselves an alliance. It's not looking good either. So, to clear these selections up, you have to kind of click out of it and do it again. So, let's see if maybe he has a daughter. Ah, there we go. Now, the age does make some difference. Uh, both of our son, who's 12, and he can only marry starting 16. So, we need to be very careful in selecting our wife, because women, they can't bear children forever, and it's very important that they do bear children to generate heirs. Now, he's 12, so in four years, he's going to be eligible to marry. In four years, she will be 26, and I say around 35 is the cutoff where you generally don't get any uh, heirs anymore. Looking at the traits, she doesn't have anything that gives her a fertility bonus, which would help increase the odds of having a child. Neither does the sister. So, these are not super good options, but we might come back to them. Let's check in the south, before we settle on anything. Let's see. Ah, oh, we could betroth her to him. Or to one of his sons. Probably more the younger one. Let's see. That's not an option. Also not an option. Let's see if the old... Nope. <laughs> he doesn't want that either. So, it probably is going to come down to this. Because that's not the thing. Let's see if he is going to take our air. Also not a thing. Wow. Okay, people are not very happy with us. We can modify a little bit and try to help it, but first we're going to look around, shop around a little bit more, maybe we can find an alliance. Nah, I would have thought this might have been closer, so it might have happened, but that's okay. Also not a thing, let's see, uh, who are you even? Ah oh yeah, it's this. Alright, let's have some betrothal here, maybe? Maybe your daughter? No, also not. Her skills are really putting us uh, a little bit back. Now, what we could do is, for example, improve the opinion of a different character of ours by, for example, sending him a gift, which will give us a positive opinion modifier for a certain amount of time, by 26, which might, might help convince him. But if we're going to do that, we should pick the best candidate and first check all our options. So we're looking still to secure an alliance early and it's not it's not looking good for us. It's not 
looking good. There's no option here. So his objection was very strong. So it's very unlikely that with an opinion bonus we're going to convince him. His objection wasn't as strong, I believe. Ah, it's still pretty strong. I think the least amount of resistance we found with Chief Donachan. So, we don't have a lot of gold, so it's probably not a good idea to spend it as enough now. Uh, so, what we could do instead, when we can't find someone right here that fits us, we can go to the daughter herself and select someone from here. Now, all of these are going to say yes. Everyone who's in here is going to say yes. And as you can see, there's some kings in here, including uh, the king of Pictland, which is a kingdom pretty close to us. There are also some Welsh, who might be pretty decently close. We need someone who will actually be able to support us in a war. Now, actually for now, we're going to take the king of Pictland. It gives a lot of prestige to, um, to us selling her, well, marrying her off to a king. And prestige for tribes is very important. So even if he's not going to come to our aid, we're going to do it because the prestige alone is quite worth it. Now let's find someone for our son. Our son, our heir, is going who we're going to play if our main character dies, or rather when our main character dies. It always happens, eventually. Now, selecting a potential wife for him has different criteria because her skills will directly affect his skills. We'll show that on him in a second. For now, we want to see if, if we sort by rank, there's going to be someone interesting. We're looking mainly for people of uh, a close relation, but we're out of luck there. There's no one here that's very close to us. They're all Italian, Frankish, Greek. It's not really helping us. So instead of going by these arbitrary, rules we're going to go for who's the best first we sort by age because we want someone young not too young mind you unless we only do it for the potential alliance but someone who's young enough to not outgrow him once he's old enough and who has some decent traits first one who comes to mind is her actually she's 16 so just came of age she's a charismatic negotiator which gives her plus five percent fertility which is good for having heirs and all the other traits aren't too bad either. So her traits aren't the greatest. She's actually a little bit better. But she's unfinished yet, so we don't know what she might become. She might become something really good. So honestly, despite her looking quite attractive, no pun intended, we're going to go for her. She's younger, closer in age, and that's good. So let's have this betrothal. Now the last thing right now, after having secured one non-aggression pact, which will try and turn into an alliance, and one suitable woman for our heir, we're going to go through all these buttons up here, okay? First things, our children, as they grow, they learn. So for each of them, we're going to set a focus. Now this is already the second stage of a focus. The first stage um, starts at zero years and goes to somewhere around 10, 12 or something. And they develop these pre-traits, basically, which might develop into actual traits that they will carry with them for most of their lives unless an event changes their traits. And these all correspond with a different specialization. Now, for the women, it doesn't matter all that much unless you want to use them later on within your own kingdom. So really just pick whatever. I usually go for diplomatic because I feel like that is what a woman would have been educated in or stewardship. So she's going to get that focus. Now our heir, that is a little bit more interesting. First we check his skills. He has a five diplomacy, six martial, three stewardship, nine intrigue and seven learning. We could go for something that corresponds to any of these. Um, but honestly, we're going to pick Marshall. Because we're going to use war a lot as a tribe early on. And we want someone who's really good at that. Because that affects 
how many units we have, how well they recover, many more options. Plus he has a trait that might develop into something sensible, such as Brave, which is really good. So he will be educated in a martial education. He is also educated by us directly. He could change another guardian, but we'll take care of that later. Now, this is a kinsman who is also lacking some focus. We'll put him to, let's say, duty. These are the pre-traits. He is not old enough yet to go for a perfect direction. So, since he might get a claim later on, it doesn't really... It doesn't matter all that much. Good. There are a lot of minor titles to take care of. This is something we're going to do next. Next episode. Not this time. For now we finish our character. And for ourselves we also get to pick traits. Alright. So we are going to check what we're good at already and try to complement it. We are already a brilliant strategist and we have an aggressive leader trait, which come from our high martial skill. If we selected war, we would get more martial and more personal combat skill, which is not bad, but we're already pretty developed on it. So this is going to take a while until it gives us a real benefit. We're also pretty good on stewardship and going for business will help us potentially uncover ways to earn some more gold, which is quite indispensable early. These can be changed after about 10 years, so it's not all that terrible to pick something. But for the beginning, unless we go for scholarship, we are going to go for business for now. So let's have this. Now, the last thing we want to select for our character until we're really ready to get this going is to select an ambition. We get this list of possible things we want to do, among which is become the King of Ireland see the realm prosper, build a war chest, and all of these give different modifiers and bonuses. For example, if we wanted to groom an heir, we would get plus 20% fertility for 12 years, um, until a child reaches 12, sorry. Now, we already have an heir, so that's not really needed. For now, we are going to go with something um, that might be a little bit more interesting, and we're going to build a war chest actually and we're trying to build money up so we can go to war right so this is what you prepare for there's one last thing which is the minor titles and after that we head off straight into the game now if you think well this was a lot and we haven't even played a second that's not a problem because this explaining it all that takes a while, but once you've got it all down and you've done it a few times, this is pretty quick. You don't have to think much about it. You'll just pick, okay, I want to achieve this this time, and then you'll be right off to go. No trouble there. Okay, so we'll end it here and check out the special minor titles on the next go. And then instead of keeping on about everything that you could do or what you could do, we're just going to start the game and play along and I will explain my decisions why I'm doing it, what I'm going for with what I do, and this way I believe I can show off how to play this game much better than telling you half an hour about each little thing that's in this game, because there's a lot of little things in this game. 